What is this thing? It's a probe. How are we supposed to write it? I don't see any command pods. Did you skip the checklist? We're not supposed to write it, that's the point. Oh. Okay. It does the boring stuff that we don't want to do. Maybe if we put boosters on it, it wouldn't be boring. Are we sending it to Ike? Oh no, this is a commsat. We need to set up a communications network to tell the Ike probe what to do. Welcome back, guys, to Space Patrol, episode number five. We are burning four orbits, and let me just tweak that burn slightly. Actually, let me stop, because our apoapsis is increasing, our periapsis is not. But that's close enough. We are in orbit around Kerbin, periapsis 298,000 meters, peri uh, apoapsis at 306. And I will circularize that a bit. We're going to be doing a lot of fiddling with the orbit today. Last time we talked, last time on Space Patrol, we talked about sending a probe to Ike. We have this, let me turn SCS off. Uh, we have some time to talk, you and I, because we're in orbit. Uh, that's not what I want to open. I want the contracts. Okay, last time we got a contract to go to Ike to explore it, and I thought to change things up, why not send a probe? I don't use probes too often. And with the new fun system, I was thinking about it. I was like, huh. We're going to be able to send a ship that's pretty light because probes are so light. We don't have to bring it back, so it's going to be even lighter. We can just beam the science back with an antenna. We need to have chief orbit around Ike, transmit or recover scientific data, land on Ike, trans yeah, etc., etc. We're going to be able to get a ton of funds, probably double our money for not much investment in terms of rocket. We won't get as much science. That's also another point to take into account. We won't get as much science doing it that way. But we'll get a ton of funds. And it just struck me as being a little bit too simple, a little bit too easy. And people keep recommending uh, the mod Remote Tech. And so I looked at, into it, and I thought, yeah, seems like fun. <laughs> so we've got a ship which is going to be sending some probes into orbit. Not to Ike, because we can't do that yet. Not with this mod. We're going to be putting them in orbit around Kerbin. Finally, a reason to put satellites in space. I also incidentally added the uh, I added the find print mod, but I, I haven't uh, noticed anything different from it. Find print is a mod that adds a bunch of contract stuff, like uh, put this uh, put put this satellite in space with this part, kind of thing. Haven't noticed anything to do with that yet. Anyway. So, the way remote tech works, if you want to use a probe somewhere, you have to be able to communicate with it back at the Space Center, which is represented by this uh, red dot right there. You can see there's no line of communication. If there were, uh, it would be represented as a bright yellow line. Here, tell you what, let's, let's pop over the apoapsis. We need to adjust this orbit anyway. We can bring our periapsis up to 300,000. And then bring our apoapsis down, make it nice and circular. What we need to do, we need to set up a network of satellites to communicate with each other. And let me spin around. We're almost... <laughs> We're being followed by the uh, the shrouds there. Man, that uh, periapsis is coming up quickly. We need to set up a network of satellites. And the mod to be honest, is a bit confusing at first. And this ship is kind of clunky. It doesn't like to rotate much because I've got all those uh, I've got all those probes on the nose. Oh, oh no, I don't want to slow down. I want to go to the prograde marker. Whoops. So we're going to be setting up a network of satellites that communicate with each other. And we have a... A variety of uh, antenna on the satellite to do that. 
Here we go. Okay, this should work this time. Let's go. Here, come on. Point at... There we go. There we go. Yeah, bring that up to 300 on the dot. Turn SCS off. Let's come back to the sunlight. First thing we need to do, we need to get just one of them to communicate with the Space Center. So let's activate this Communicatron 16. Okay, it has a range of 2.5 million meters. That's 2,500 kilometers. It's operational. It's active. It has a certain amount of charge it requires. So I have some big batteries on these guys and also some solar panels. There we go. Well, the line is still there. It's just no longer connected to our ship, I suppose I should say. It's connected to that probe. The first one that has been launched. Here he is. And he can launch his solar panels so he can recover his battery power. He's got 1,200 electric charge available. Uh, they do generate some waste heat. You see, I'm at 0.01. 0 0.02 and I have a capacity of 800. I did not put any radiators on this thing to dissipate heat. I think just being on the dark side of the planet and out of the sun, I think that's enough for a probe of this size. It's not really putting out a lot of power. It's not generating a lot of heat. So let me see. Did uh, launching that guy affect his orbit? Not really. All right, so there's number one. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other ship, and this is going to be a little tedious, so I'll probably do a lot of it off camera. But I'm going to take this ship, and I'm going to raise and lower his orbit until we're a sufficient distance either bef uh, behind or in front of our friend here, and then we'll launch the second guy. All right, so the second probe is ready to be released. Fly free, young bird. There you go. Okay, and let's switch to it and engage its solar panels. Its electric charge is down because I guess it was uh, managing the SAS routines for the overall ship. But it should fill up over time, and it and this is like overkill in terms of electrical charge. I did check on the waste heat on the other guy, and it is accumulating. It's up to 0.4. But uh, these satellites will be replaced in the fullness of time with better satellites when we get the better ones later the better uh, all the better parts Not notably the uh, the better antenna as well later on we're going to be beaming power not just information not just communication but power that's part of the interstellar mod all right so see the network that's starting to form we're connected to the space station here or to the the space center we're connected to the space center with the yellow line and then this brown line is a shows that we're connected we're within range of this satellite there so we're starting to form a network and I'm pretty sure I can get away with only having four their orbits are not exactly the same so over time they will desync but they have a ton of Delta V these little guys so I can tweak it if I need to let's see vessel one Delta V 3500 meters per second yeah that's a lot okay uh, one thing is probably a good idea to do. We have two radar dishes, and I forgot to do this on the other one. I will do this in a little bit. And they have to have a target selected. When you do that, this drop-down menu pops up. And I'm going to say uh, I want one to target. I'm pretty sure we can have two targets. I want one to target Mission Control on Kerbin. Okay, close that. Oh, I have to activate it. Whoops. There we go. Okay, what's our... Electrical charge is fine, because we're in the sun. So that's going to target the space center directly. Pro not really necessary, but it has a better range in case we get just outside of uh, 2,500 kilometers, like maybe way over here. I think we'll be out of line of sight at this height anyway. But I have to. Why not? The other one, you want to activate and set the target as the active vessel. So later on, when we send a probe to Ike, that will be our active vessel, because that's the one we're going to be playing as. That's the one we will be controlling. And so this guy will be sending instructions via the Space Center to this probe. 
And then that probe has that Communitron 8888 targeted the Ike probe, which is going to be way out. Uh, that's not Duna, but you know, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. So that's what they're going to look like. And I'm pretty sure that the electrical charge will not be an issue. So there's two launched. Now to launch two more. Little update. Third probe has been launched. And his radar dish antennae have been set to their target. If I can click on one. Hello. Why can't I click on you? You've got to click on just the right part. There we go. So this guy is active. And he's targeting the active vessel, which will eventually be our probe for Ike. This guy is targeting mission control. Not really necessary, but I have two of them, so why not? And we can control him because we have an unbroken line of communication with the Kerbal Space Center, which is way over here. So we are actually, we're in danger of breaking line of sight. We're, it looks, looks like we're about to do that. We're breaking line of sight with this guy, almost. But we are, let's see, if I set him as my target, we are 1,300 kilometers away from him, and we have a range with these omnidirectional antennas, which are this guy right here. We've got a range of 2,500 kilometers. So what I'm probably going to do is, uh, after I get all four set out, I will increase their orbits to, let's say, maybe 400 or 450 thousand meters something like that okay but he's good to go we can leave him here switch back to this guy buzz we need to make sure that buzz does not run out of fuel because he still has to deorbit this thing uh, we have a good amount of Delta V we've got another 700 it doesn't take much to deorbit either so uh, we're gonna be, no I don't want that uh, we we're gonna be okay I just have to keep an eye on it all right, now what I'm going to do, I want to set you as my target. Target set. Good. And then I want to, no, I want to be in the orbital mode. We're going to increase the apoapsis on our orbit to launch the fourth guy. And you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and turn on one of these. Oh, quit wobbling. This ship is kind of unstable, actually. Activate. Okay. I put two on here for symmetry reasons. I don't think there's any reason to have both of them activated, though. Here we go. See you later, guy. <laughs> it's kind of funny uh, how instinctual orbital mechanics have become after playing this game for so long. Okay, let's stop there. We're up to 500,000 meters, and we have 80 fuel left. We just zoomed away from him, but we actually slowed ourselves down. He's going to zoom by us in the orbit, and you can see how far away we're going to be. That cannot be accurate. Maybe because... Here, let's keep going. There we go. <laughs> All right, that's more accurate. So once we come around to this orange marker, he's going to be that far away which tells me we need to raise our apoapsis up. That's not going to form a nice square pattern like I wanted. Oh, we're in time acceleration. Okay, accelerating. Something like... Uh, that's probably good. We're going to tweak them and make the overall orbit bigger in a bit anyway. So as long as it's roughly approximate to forming a square or a diamond pattern around the planet. That's fine. Okay, now we just need... Uh, let's go ahead and spin around a bit. How much fuel do we have left? 72. Okay, no big deal. I think, we get, I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine. If I have to, uh, I can just get rid of this guy and let him finish the maneuver because he's got plenty... He's got plenty of fuel. He's got a lot of Delta V for... Uh, for changing their, their orbits, for fine-tuning things. Over time, they will become out of sync. Check this out. That's pretty good, huh? Oh, yep. We broke line of sight with him. Sometimes these uh, this grid seems to desync, and you have to either switch to a ship or go back to the space center and come back for it to reassert itself. Maybe that's because I was piloting this guy without the antenna out. I don't know. We're going to come back to our periapsis and put our orbit back in place. Right about here. 
45 seconds, 40 seconds from there. Shouldn't take very long to burn that much. Okay. All right, Buzz. Are you ready? Buzz loves this kind of stuff. Hut Hat thinks it's boring. We'll send him on something more exciting later. There we go. Oh, stay on target. Yeah, we're barely burning any fuel as we do this, so I think we'll be okay. And this is the last one we have to do. I don't know what uh, how much I'll need to deorbit him, actually, so hopefully we don't have to send a rescue vessel. Maybe that would be something fun for Hut Hat to do. Waste a bunch of funds just to come rescue... Uh, Come rescue Buzz. But I think we'll be okay. Alright, let's just get this down and close to 300. That's a 300, so we must... Uh, that's our apoapsis now. Alright, and we have almost a full diamond. This guy isn't connected. The line of sight has been broken. Let's go around here to the periapsis and fix that. Blip, 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 blip. <laughs> That's all I hear when they start talking. Blip, 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 blip. All right, spin around 180 degrees again. I did not put any reaction wheels on this thing, so it's kind of cumbersome to spin them around. Spin. You can't be... Oh, you're out of electrical charge. Shoot. Uh, okay. Well, let's get some more. There's the sun. And that should start showing up. There we go. All right, now you can spin around. I guess I neglected to turn off SAS as I was moving around the dark side of the planet. That's filling up rapidly. Very good. So we're going to spin around here and just do a very small adjustment. Then we'll launch the last one. And then we can raise all their orbits. We can deorbit Buzz. And the world will live in happiness and harmony once again okay good enough just like that all right that's the last thing he's gonna do set him free set him free okay <laughs> we need to set up the targets no connection to send command on oh oh well we we should have soon why are we not connected to him do we not quite have line of sight it hasn't quite... I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, we can communicate with this guy, but he... I'm not sure exactly why. It's only 200 meters away. And we should be connected from here. Possibly we don't quite have line of sight. But he does. <laughs> so I'm not sure why the, uh, the antennas aren't connecting. Our electrical charge is fine. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm new to this mod, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Let's just try once more. Uh, activate. No connection to send command on. Huh, okay. What if... Let's switch... I, I said this uh, sometimes desyncs. So let's switch to this guy, and then we'll switch back. Maybe that will reboot the system. It'll do like a check. See where all the connect... There we go. See? That's, that's what I thought. Okay, now which one I wanted to go back to this guy. Switch to. We should be connected now. Okay, that's the wrong guy. Now we're connected. Okay, and now we can control him. Excellent. So I guess you just need to switch to a target that's not within uh, visible range, basically. So, set your target to the active vessel. And activate. And then set this target to mission control, just in case. Activate. Blammo. Okay, so they're all set up. However, uh, we're breaking line of sight, so we have to increase all of their periapsises and apoapsis. We have to increase the orbit from 300,000 meters up to something higher. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I should be able to do all four. We're all four connected. So let's go ahead and burn all four up to 400. Let's try uh, 450. There we go. This guy has a ton of Delta V. 450.
Okay. And the time to periapsis, our time to apoapsis is 26 minutes. So I'm gonna do that for all four and then adjust their orbit to try to get it nice and synced up. Hopefully it'll look like a nice pretty image. There. All right, it's done. The initial commsat network using remote tech is up and operational. You can see the chain of connections we have back to the Space Center and the connections we have with nearby satellites, the overall network. Pretty cool. Let's switch back to this guy and see what it changes to. Here we go. Load in, please. All right, we're on the dark side of the planet. It's not an exact square, but it's pretty close. It's a diamond. It's a square. It's a diamond. And there is a there is a brief moment when the satellites go behind the the planet and are not exposed to the sun where they run out of charge. So they'll be disconnected from the network very briefly, but it's not enough to matter because we have four in orbit. Um I, d I either need more solar panels. No, not no more solar panels. I need more battery storage. I thought 1,200 would be more than enough. It's not quite enough. Maybe like 1,500 would do it. All right, last thing to do uh, for this video. We've got to send Buzz. We have to send Buzz back to the Space Center so that we can pilot the, uh, the drone that we're going to send, the probe. So we can pilot the probe that we are going to send back to Ike. Not back to, we haven't been there yet. Well, we've been there in a previous version of the game. But when we send that probe there, he's now set up to communicate back to the Space Center. So we should be go for that. Hopefully we have enough to deorbit this thing. Uh, if we don't, then Buzz is going to need a rescue mission soon. Maybe he can get out and push. Where's our periapsis? 172. And I don't hear the engines. Maybe because we're in space and there's no sound in space. Just get below 70 and it'll take care of itself eventually. Okay, we're going to be fine. The thing will deorbit. How much fuel we got? Let's just burn it all. There we go. There's the sound. Blammo! All right. So that will bring us down. I guess we're not going to be... Uh, I wasn't really paying attention. But that will not bring us down at the Space Center. Let's just time accelerate ourselves down. And then we can release the, the ship right before crashing into the... I guess it's going to be into the water. Oh yeah, Buzz is loving it. And we are re-entering the atmosphere. No, we're going to be over land. I take it back. We are slowing down quite a bit. Let me turn SAS off. No, it's going to be over the water. I was wrong again. Okay. So at about 2,000 meters, I will let go of this guy, our fuel tank and engine. See you later. And then hopefully... Oh, we've got like a uh, sombrero. This is a a festive Mexican landing pod here. There we go. Oh, it flipped us upside down. All right, we'll see you back at the Space Center. <laughs> we brought back 1.7 science, uh, 3,000 funds, and our crew for zero reputation. All right, well done, self. Next time, I guess we're sending a probe to Ike to get some more science and some more funds. We're down to 242,000 funds. We'll see you next time. Hope you're enjoying the series. Stay tuned for more Space Patrol.